Hi guys, it's Dr. Sandra Lee here. You guys also know me as Dr. Pimple Popper. I'm here to show you some behind the scenes of some of my favorite videos. And this one is probably definitely in my top five. It might even be my number one favorite video. This guy has two big dilated pores of whiner. A dilated pore is essentially just a giant blackhead. And imagine a blackhead that gets trapped under the skin and more debris and dirt and skin cells get trapped in the skin and it really kind of causes the skin to stretch open. So now you have a pore that is quite enlarged and it easily fills with dirt and debris and that's why you get a giant blackhead in there. Goodness. This little friend of yours. I think you're gonna lose a little weight today. It's like a rock. You see that they leave a dilated kind of hole that will shrink down. Um, but really the only way that you can remove this sort of dilated opening on your skin is to excise the edges and refresh the wounds and be able to close it. I think to a lot of us popaholics, this is particularly satisfying and quite amazing because to have something just pull out of, it's as if a little pebble or a little rock has been tucked under your skin. And you can see how dry and desiccated this is because it is rock hard. It's like, literally like a little rock. You might have the award for the biggest blackheads. <laughs> My goodness. You're gonna actually, your clothes are gonna fit you better now. This thing is like a hump on your back. This is like hard. This is a cyst that I remove on the back, but the difference is is that the cyst is removed via a punch biopsy tool. Now, this is a tool that we use in dermatology often and not usually for this reason, but most commonly to remove skin uh, that we want to take a biopsy of. We want to examine the tissue and, and find out what the diagnosis is, whatever the skin condition is that this person comes in to see us for. Runaway cysts. Right. A punch biopsy tool is like a little cookie cutter or a little apple core, and it allows you to get a deeper uh, specimen under the skin, not just the surface of the skin, but a little bit deeper, like maybe up down to the subcutaneous space. Mm. Nice little sack wall kind of thing. Yeah, mm, look at that. That's cute. <laughs> So in this instance, I use a punch biopsy tool to make the initial excision in the skin for a uh, removal of a cyst. This allows me to get down to that level where that cyst is, which is usually 
in this subcutaneous space or under all those uh, more superficial layers of the skin. And uh, I know in this sort of instance that I'm going to squeeze the cyst out. I'm gonna break that sac wall of that epidermoid cyst and squeeze it out. And I'm trying to leave a smaller incision or a smaller opening. And he's good to go. My name's Joe. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I'm here to have Dr. Sandra Lee check out this bump on my forehead. It was about 15 months ago I first noticed my bump. I thought it was just a pimple, but it just kept growing to what we have now. So it became almost like my third eye. I was even told by my wife that it was affecting my capacity to think normal, my brain. You better have it checked out. It's probably affecting your thoughts. Have a seat. Dr. Lee's going to be in shortly. All right. OK, thank, thank you. you. I asked my wife, I said, yeah, you think it could be drained? So she said, sure. She took one of her diabetic syringes, popped it right dead center here, pushed it all the way down, and it stayed in there. No fluid came out, and I was literally walking around with this syringe in my bump here. And I remember her saying, nothing came out. Hmm, man, you need to get that checked out. Mr. Joe Carter. Yes, that's How me. are you, sir? It's nice a pleasure to meet, to meet you. you. Nice to meet Likewise. you. You got a bump right there. A bump right there. What yeah. the heck? Where'd you get that from? Uh, I don't really know. It's been there a little over a year. Okay. It started as like a pimple. Did it happen from anything? Did you feel no. like there's anything that triggered it? it just no. kind of came out of nowhere. Yes. Does it cause you any pain or discomfort, or is it mainly just the appearance that appearance is concerning of to you? Appearance of it, no. And how quickly it's kind of growing here. Right, right. Okay. It's... Did you ever see a doctor for it? No. I'm the first one. You're I feel so one. privileged. Uh, Joe has a bump on his face in a very noticeable position, right smack in the middle of his face, that you, you cannot avoid that. It has been growing there pretty quickly, so that is a little concerning to me. I'm really looking forward to taking a look at him and getting that off of him. Do you mind if I give it a little touch here? Right I just want to see what it feels like here. Yeah, you got like a little knob right under there, huh? It's pretty hard. I mean, what I would think if you hadn't given me this history of oh, how long this has been there, I would think a pilar cyst. But the okay. fact that you've only had it for about a year and it's grown to this size, you know, that's a little bit unusual. So <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what this is. Right. The best way to do this is to take it off, send it in, and just have it looked under the microscope, OK? okay. So Great. I'm really interested to find out what this is. All right. All right. Well, well let's get started with you. Do what you got to do, Doc. Thank you. See you in a little bit. OK. I think he has got a pilar cyst. It's a little bit strange because it's only been there for a little while, but usually those occur more on the scalp, but it just has that firmness here, so I don't know. But it is right in the center of his face. You want the round scissors? I think a rounded scissor would be really nice, okay. just to be gentle because there's a lot of important nerves and vessels right there. All right, so let's get all set up. I feel nervousness, but if there's something there that's abnormal and shouldn't be there, it could be a dangerous to my health. It's got to come out. You make sure I'm not hurting you at all, OK? You feel me pushing on you, but you should not feel anything sharp. Well, my wife, she said it was affecting my thoughts, my brain. What? She said, oh, yeah, that's, you need to have it checked out, because I think you're thinking irrational. I think she's just trying to make sure you get this done. Yeah, she's, she's a good manipulator like that. Oh, <laughs> this is going on TV. Don't you forget that. See something, it's right there, ready. I think it's a cyst, it might even be a pilar cyst. Mr. Carter comes in with a bump on the middle of his forehead. It's been pretty rapidly growing. From the look of it, from the examination, I think it's a pilar cyst, but I never really know until I start working on it. Okay, I'm gonna give a little squeeze, okay? All righty. You got some kind of cyst here. Let's see what kind it is. We could kind of tell sometimes by the um, wall of it. There's no clear-cut reason why cysts happen, but they just do, and they're fairly common. They do occur in the hair-bearing area because they're derived from the hair follicle, so you're only going to see them in areas that potentially grow hair. I don't want to squeeze too hard or else this gets on our wall. You OK? Yeah, I don't feel anything. Good. I squeezed out all that cheesy content from Joe's cyst. 
And I've really discarded that because that's not what really counts. What counts is that sac wall. I need to remove that completely and I'll send that off to pathology to confirm the diagnosis. Almost there. Done. This looks like it's, I don't know if it's an epidermoid or a pilar cyst. I'm just checking that I got the whole thing. It looks like I did. It's like a little lima bean. Joe has a cyst. It's either an epidermoid or a pilar cyst. The shape of the sac actually tells me that this is most likely a pilar cyst because it's thicker and it kind of retains its shape. Epidermoid cysts tend to be a little thinner and more friable and easily torn, but I'm only gonna get confirmation if I send it off to pathology. I can't wait to show you. All right, we're at the final stretch, though, here. Let me just take this little bit out here, and then we're good. All right. You are now cystless. Oh, man, great. I think the result looks great. I've hidden it really well in a natural forehead crease, and I think over time, you'll have a tough time finding it. Wow. Just puffy right now, but it'll come down. Beautiful. Yeah. I like that. That's just skin cells that just kind of shed into this balloon. See this? Wow. When my wife sees it, she might say, oh, mm, she did a good job. <laughs> That's probably about it. OK, guys, I'm done for the day, all right? I'll see you guys later. OK. You're still here? I just finished my last case. I, I just have some charts and then I'll be done. I gotta tell you how cute my last case was. It was this older gentleman with a, with a cyst like in the middle of his forehead, like a cyclops. And he said that part of the reason why he wanted this bump removed was because his wife made so much fun of him. I mean- Well, I, I know what that can be like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you're done for the day. Let's, let's, right. let's pack it all up, and you're gonna take right, me out to dinner gonna, and tell me how much you love me, okay? I'm Grab your keys. These, let me take these. I'm though. grabbing my bag. I'm done. I'm done for the day. Come on, take those I'm getting off. dinner, or you're getting dinner? Um, you're getting dinner. Why? It's, it, I, I've, I cook every other day of the week. Ha! Everybody knows that's a lie. <laughs> It's been two months since Joe's surgery, and his forehead is looking amazing. His third eye is gone forever. My name is Amber Taylor. I am from Ada, Oklahoma. I'm 37 years old. Blake Shelton, I think I can get that on for you today. Do you want to send it out to anybody? Being a DJ is my escape, because I suffer with a condition that tries to steal your daily life, your joy, your hope, and who you are as a person, it makes me feel like a freak. Hydratinata suppurativa, also known as HS, is better defined as inflammation of the sweat glands. It affects 90% of my skin that you can't see. It causes what I call craters to form. Sometimes they're the size of dimes, sometimes they're the size of baseballs, and they are not fluid. They are filled with infection. They're very painful. I have a hole right here. It will drain, and this is now tracked. Whenever these drain, it smells like rotten trash. I've had a doctor tell me that it's because I was fat. This started when I was eight years old. I was not fat. I've been told it's because I was a smoker. I quit smoking years ago. I've been told by doctors to cut out processed food, sugar, caffeine, nothing changed. I feel like the only person who ever understood was my mom. She fought for me. My mom took me to so many different doctors. She researched and made me try this diet or put me on this herb. But when I was a junior in high school, she went into a coma. And then when she died, it was devastating. My mom, Algie, is getting hurting, so she have to take baths every night, and so um, she puts pads on. I wish my mom and Algie can go away. Hey, Noah. My relationship with my dad has been rocky through the years. I don't think he fully understands me or my skin condition. I've got several flare-ups right now. I don't have just one. Mm -hmm. So look at this from the other day. Was that that big when you were here? Now, 
I have a very hard time dealing with. I, I could not stomach it myself. Why? I, I just, it's, it's just graphic. Rhonda is my stepmom. She married my dad four months after my mom died. I'm hurt constantly. It's an everyday battle. I know how bad it is, Amber. I just don't show it. I'm, I've never showed feelings that much, and you know that. Okay. I knew it was a disease, and then she would probably never get rid of it, and it will probably kill her eventually, unless she gets some help. I think this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Something that I've probably waited for my whole life. A doctor who will listen and try to understand. Whereas other doctors have never cared to. Knock, knock. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Are you Amber? I'm Amber. Nice to meet nice you, to meet Amber. You. Amber. Welcome. So what are you doing here today, by the way? Well, I suffer with hydroadenitis separativa. OK. And I have it pretty much everywhere you can't see. I, the, one of the first things I notice about you is how gorgeous your skin is. Your I skin and face is beautiful. Isn't that crazy? And I bet you that stings mm -hmm. a little when you hear that because you know you're hiding something. Oh, girl. Don't be like, come on, don't do that. Here, let me get you a clean up Don't do that. Thanks. I'm here, I'm here for you, okay? Hydradenitis suprativa is a tough skin condition to deal with. It is a condition that is probably more common than we think because people hide it. So these are um, fistulas and tracts. It's called honeycombing, where this cyst, if you squeeze it, sometimes it'll tract off onto the other side of the armpit. It's inflammation. It's the irritation of these hair follicles and these sweat glands, and that's when your body decides, oh my gosh, this is a foreign object, let me destroy it. And that's where it gets red and painful and swollen. Usually what we'll do is we'll just locally inject a little steroid in the area, and you know that just locally suppresses the immune system there calms it down. So we'll do that there. I've never actually had a steroid injection into the site before. No doctor's ever offered me one. A corticosteroid can help calm down your immune system. So if we inject it locally into an area that is inflamed or red or angry, it helps not make the area as red and inflamed. But there is a downside to injecting a red inflamed sore. You ready? Mm -hmm. One little baby pinch. I'm gonna wiggle you here. Baby. Okay, okay. It hurts. Oh! That's it. I hate hurting my patients. But in this case, I kind of have to elicit a little pain and discomfort for her to get the good result. Okay, ready? Little baby pinch here. Pinch. Mmm. Oh. All right, let me just go one more time here. Ready? Okay. Third time, baby pinch. Okay, okay, pinch. Ooh. That's it, that's it, that's it. Just work mm. through it. Okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm just sitting there. See how I inject right there and it comes out of that top one? Because there's, there's a tunnel under there. All right, done. Steroid injections are really going to help the cysts that you have that are active, but I'm still going to look into other areas that can help improve her life. I understand what you're, what you're going through because it's sort of like this hidden disease that you feel alone and you kind of suffer yourself because people don't know it. And it's important to have people around you that understand. Right. And is that something that you have trouble with too? Yes. Yeah. Because you feel like you don't have a support system. And I did okay for the most part until I had a child. Yeah. And he has made me realize how important having support is. Yeah. Because I don't want him to grow up feeling that you have to be independent. There's no one there to help you. Do you talk to anybody about this? I have patients here that have the same condition as you, and I'm going to get you their phone number. Okay. We've treated them with medications, and they've gotten better. Okay. But I think that it's really important for you to have somebody to talk to that understands what you're going through. That would be great. That would be, I think that would be the most special thing for you. So I, I already have somebody in mind that I think you're going to love. I definitely feel like seeing Dr. Lee has helped me emotionally. Hey, Jillian, what's going on? Hey, Amber. Dr. Lee wanted me to talk to a real live individual who has HS. I really get flared if I'm like super, super stressed. 
Right. And that's when I know it's like, okay, I need to take care of myself. I need to like chill out. Right. All right, girl, thank you. And I'm so grateful Dr. Lee put me in touch with her. Oh, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> but once I got the injections, it changed everything. It was a game changer. It just reduces the pain. It reduces the inflammation. It changes my life dramatically. Hey, you guys.